In the summertime, I've had like this bug of crochet. So this isn't actually going to be a knit and chat. This is gonna be a crochet and chat. One of the first ever, the inaugural crochet and chats. Hello you guys, welcome here. If you're new here, my name's Bethany. I'm the girl behind Well Love Knits. And I'm excited to sit down and knit and chat with you guys because I feel like it's been a really, really long time. Um, and yeah, there's just so much to tell. I have been in baby bliss, in the baby bubble, over the last month, uh, month plus, because I was also just before giving birth, you know, kind of in my nesting cocoon <laughs> and really not focusing on anything else besides preparing for a baby to arrive. And the baby has arrived. My second son was born in June of this year and, uh, over the last month, we have really enjoyed welcoming him into our family. And I wanted to just sit down and take a few minutes while he's napping. I don't think he will be doing so for long, but while he is, uh, catch up with you guys, tell you a little bit about um, the birth story, if you're interested in that, and share a little bit about what I've been working on over the last couple of weeks. And speaking of that, I decided to start a baby blanket halfway through my pregnancy. Uh, and it was mainly just because when I found out I was pregnant with Arthur, my first baby, uh, I started knitting right away, all the baby clothes. Halfway through my second pregnancy, I kind of realized, wow, I haven't really made anything. <laughs> and I felt a little guilty. It, <laughs> it was more motivated by guilt than anything. And so I cast on a baby blanket. It was the Stella quilt cushion. I was gonna turn it into a baby blanket. Um, there's a video on that if you're curious and I have links to uh, what that project was. I haven't frogged it or anything, but I haven't simply haven't picked it up. The problem I have <laughs> with a summer baby is knitting wise, I don't really know what to make. I don't really wanna make socks. Honestly, I haven't even put my baby in socks. Uh, and that, um, it just seems like a pointless project for me. And then anything else, I just, he's not really in anything besides like little short sleeve bodysuits. So there's really no motivation for me to get, to knit him anything, to give him anything uh, knitting related. This is something that I started, I don't know, I was just exhausted overdue, waiting for this baby to arrive. And I remembered back to the crochet baby blanket that I was working on for Arthur last year uh, around the same time. And I remember I just had so much fun with that project and we use it um, every day. Crochet has been really calling to me lately because it's just so easy to sit down, not really think about it, really um, just sit and have a project that I can work on, still feel productive, but not give too much mental energy. That's something really important after welcoming a new baby as far as my projects go. Similarly, having a postnatal multivitamin that I can seamlessly integrate into my routine has been huge for me this postpartum. And I wanna thank Ritual for that. That I've been taking their Essential for Women postnatal multivitamins daily, and it has made a huge difference in my recovery this time around. I definitely notice a difference in my body from pregnancy to postpartum. I feel like my body feels almost empty, depleted of nutrients, so it's really important to me to integrate a postnatal multivitamin for for that, especially because I am breastfeeding. I just want to make sure that I have everything that my body needs, that I'm giving so much to this new little person. I wanna make sure that I'm taking care of myself. And that's exactly what I use a postnatal multivitamin for. I really, really like these because they are made with high quality ingredients. Uh, they are vegan, non-GMO and uh, they are third party tested for heavy metals and allergens and things that you just don't wanna have in your body. So I really like that about these vitamins in particular. After taking so many different vitamins this pregnancy, I was taking one for iron, I was taking magnesium, I was taking, gosh, I don't even know what else, but I had multiple different pills in my hand having to take them on a certain schedule each day. And 
from going from that to now only having one vitamin that I can take any time of day with or without food has been a huge game changer. It's just really simplified my routine. It's worked seamlessly into my routine and I really appreciate that. And if you wanna see what Ritual offers for yourself, you can click the link in my description to get 25% off your first order. With them, they have not just postnatal multivitamins, they have a regular multivitamin, they have stuff for skincare, a lot of different options for you to review and choose from. Uh, and when you click the link in my description, you could get the 25% off. And if you're not satisfied within the first 30 days, Ritual will give you your first order for free. So they really stand behind their product. So definitely go check them out. Thank you so much, Ritual. And let's get back to our chat. So I have a lot more colorful cones but I need to go back through them and wind up some more cakes. And this is really all I have left. I have some purple, more of like a golden yellow, a bright, bright red. It's really fun green color. Uh, and those are like really the colors that I still have. I have plenty more where that came from. I just have to go make some cakes. So let's just pick up a color and get started. Uh, and then the darker colors that I have, I have more of like a foresty green color. And then I have some leftover navy from my um, Mega Erica jumper that I recently finished. And then some black too from my Farnham sweater. So those are some leftovers that I have. Uh, and I'll use this for the border, some of the brighter colors for the center and just do something a little bit opposite to what you see right here. So that's the plan. Um, I'm not a huge crochet person, so I always have to really get back into the mindset of it <laughs> before, uh, whenever I pick up this project. But I was really going hard on it um, in early June. Uh, my due date was the 1st of June. So I was thinking because it's a second baby that maybe he would come just on his due date, maybe earlier, but unfortunately for me, <laughs> he was just like Arthur and decided to arrive a week later. He did come a couple, of, maybe a day or two, a day maybe earlier than Arthur did. Um, I had a, an induction scheduled, again, very similar to Arthur. That was uh, one thing that I really just did not want to have was an induction because I was going without, I personally prefer to give birth without any like um, painkillers, any medication. So an induction would have made that a little bit more difficult in my eyes. It would have been more intimidating for me to go into it. So I was really praying that, <laughs> you know, this would be a very, um, that it would be a labor that would come spontaneously instead of having to have any medical intervention. Uh, and I was very thankful that that was the case. Well, on the 6th of June, late, late at night, uh, I started having contractions, but they were not very, um, strong and I hadn't really been having contractions at all that whole week where I was past my due date. I was really thinking, okay, this baby's really just going to stay inside <laughs> because at least with Arthur, I had some, you know, contractions here and there. Nothing was very painful, nothing, maybe a couple of Braxton Hicks, but nothing that was giving me any indication that labor was soon. I didn't really have anything like that. I did lose my mucus plug around my due date before my due date, but that doesn't really tell you one way or the other if you're gonna give birth. So I was really thinking that uh, he was gonna stay put. So the night of the 6th of June, I was not really expecting anything to happen. I did go to bed a little early and I woke up at 11 at night. And I remember having a con something that felt like a contraction, but it was not very uh, strong and it was not long at all. Uh, it was just like less than 30 seconds. And again, it wasn't very painful. So I went to the bathroom and then I went back to bed <laughs> and I woke up again at like three in the morning, two and a half, two, two and a half, two thirty three in the morning. I woke up and I started having a couple more um, and I was like, wow, these are not very strong, but they are coming kind of consistently, but still further apart. So the rule is five, five, one. Um, I already forgot 
what the rule is, but they need to be five minutes apart, lasting for one minute. Um, and I forget what the other five is. Five minutes apart, lasting for one minute. Anyway, that's, you know, your general rule. But they were a little bit more consistent. So I was like, okay, they're keeping me awake. They're not painful, but they're enough and more frequent to keep me awake. Again, really not five minutes apart at all, like eight minutes apart, 10 minutes apart, not consistent. That was the one thing that I was really noting is that these were not consistent contractions. So who knows, they're gonna go away. So I decided to hop in the shower because some of the recommendations are, you know, water would help soothe contractions and maybe slow it down. Um, and if it doesn't slow down when you're in the shower, then you know that you're in labor or more or less. I'm not an expert here. I'm just telling you what I kind of understood. And this is just my story. So I'm not giving you any advice, by the way. If you're pregnant, look somewhere else for that kind of information. Yeah, I hopped in the shower. I That soothes some of the contractions. And then my water broke just after. <laughs> uh, and again, so my doctor told me to go to the hospital as soon as my water breaks. So um, that was it. I t went into the bedroom. My husband was asleep, woke him up, uh, told him, hey, we got to go to the hospital. I had to wake up my mom who was staying with us. She was upstairs, just told her like, hey, we're going to the hospital. You're in charge of Arthur when you wake up in the morning. And off we went at... 3.30, we called a taxi and we decided to get going to the hospital. Uh, again, my contractions were not strong. They were not painful at all. Uh, they were like period contractions, I mean, period cramps. And I don't really have very strong periods, at least in for my pain tolerance, they are manageable. So I, again, was not in the mentality of, I was in the mentality of, this is gonna take a while, <laughs> but I have to go to the hospital because my doctor told me once my water breaks, I need to be there. Then when we get into the taxi, which is like a 15, 20 minute ride to the hospital, we um, my contractions started picking up in intensity and in frequency. And, but again, not a lot, but enough where I needed to breathe through them. Uh, but remembering back to my previous labor, I had very painful contractions for hours, it felt like. Uh, and I was kind of stuck in like a little bit of a loop. And with that, and I feel like for like a two solid hours, I was having really, really painful contractions before having to push. We get to the hospital. It's around 3.45, close to four. We tell them, hey, she her water broke, time to go in labor. We go upstairs, we get greeted by a midwife. My water fully breaks, and then within 10 minutes, I'm pushing. It takes 10 minutes to push, and that baby is out by like 4.35 in, in the morning. <laughs> it was amazing. If my water hadn't have broken, um, yeah, I wouldn't have gone to the hospital and I probably would have had a baby at home. It was that quick. And all this time, I didn't have like any kind of pain, except for when I was pushing, obviously, because I was feeling all of that. Was I actually like, not in agony, but like really making, <laughs> I don't know, effort. There was not a lot of effort. This whole um, labor process, there was not, a lot of straining. There was not a lot of, I was breathing through it very easily. I was able to manage it. And that was the most wild thing to me. It's like the whole time, it was just unexpected. You could just label it as the most unexpected, but the most welcome birth um, possible because it wasn't difficult. It wasn't scary. It was fast, but it wasn't scary. You know, I just felt like Everything, it's a very smooth labor. It was very fat. It was everything that I wanted. I, after the difficult time that I had with Arthur, I wouldn't say that my first birth experience was traumatic. Obviously I wanted to do it all over again. And after it was done through, uh, after having Arthur, I just remember it was tough, but I was really, I would have done it over again hundred percent. And it was a great experience. Nonetheless, it was magical. It was everything, you know, witnessing giving birth that 
it's just a life changing experience. And it's something that to be in awe of. And, uh, but even leading up to this birth, I was just praying like, please let it be fast, whatever it is, please don't let it last 12 hours. Well, let me tell you, it didn't last more than a few hours. Um, so if you really think about it from 3 a.m. to 5, 2.30, okay, if I want to be a little bit more generous. So two and a half hours, really, of active labor where I was awake, breathing, uh, going through all of my coping mechanisms, uh, and just to be able to push so fast, so seamlessly, you know, without much difficulty was such a blessing. And so at five in the morning, <laughs> after the most unexpected arrival, um, my son Noah was born on June 7th. And it was just, it was a perfect birth, I would say. If you look back and you think, okay, all of these things could have happened and that would have been pretty um, traumatizing. <laughs> yeah, you look back and you think, wow, if, if something hadn't have happened the way that it did, I could have had a baby at home by ourselves. That would have been very shocking, but it didn't happen. And it happened the way that it did and it was exactly what I wanted. Exactly, yeah, it was just, it was wonderful. Uh, so many, that whole experience was so perfect because it really just helped welcome another baby into our family and to expand our family and to adjust to that change gave me a lot more energy following. Um, and I feel like being a second time mom, I knew so much. And so that felt a lot more helpful. But then at the same time, I have been noticing that I've forgotten so much already. <laughs> and Arthur's not even two yet. So in theory, I should remember a lot of stuff. And I do. I have like a, a reflex. A, it's like second nature for some things. But then for other things like, what was Arthur doing? Is this normal? Uh, how do I approach the situation? Um, sometimes with that. Uh, I am left blanking and not really sure what to do. So it's like starting over in some instances because every baby is different and they go through their own little struggles at the first couple of weeks. We're definitely experiencing that with Noah. Uh, like he's a lot more colicky than Arthur ever was. Very gassy. <laughs> I don't remember Arthur being so gassy. I think maybe he has a dairy sensitivity, so I've kind of stopped that. Um, but still, that takes some time to really see some results there. We're trying a lot of different things that I hadn't even tried with Arthur, hadn't had to consider, hadn't had to even look into. Uh, so that that's interesting. Getting a lot of help this time around was, was great. Uh, having my mom stay for over a month was fantastic. And then now Roz is on paternity leave. So we haven't really been in a usual routine. So I'm kind of spoiled in that way that I haven't really had to had, have too many adjustments, like anything that's really overwhelming. I think in the coming weeks, <laughs> it might be a different story. Um, but right now we're just really enjoying um, yeah, the, the bubble and enjoying being able to all spend time together and give Arthur the attention that he deserves. Uh, uh, yeah, all of that frees up extra time to make sure that he's really well adjusted with Noah being here. And he has been um, as much as, you know, like a two-year-old really can be. <laughs> There's always going to be some big emotions, but that's just, you know, growing up and being a toddler, getting into toddlerhood. We were going to experience that anyway, but probably at a, a little bit more of a degree some days because of the new addition to the family. But so far, it's all been good, you know, uh, and I'm really thankful. I'm really, really thankful for how everything happened. And uh, I really, yeah, couldn't have imagined it going any better than that. So I was just on like a high afterwards. And I'm going to be honest with you, um, leading up to the birth, didn't really get a lot of knitting in. Like I was saying, I kind of had a 
just huge motivation to start working on crochet, but then I kind of lost motivation for that. I had a nesting period where I was working on art. Our walls are still very bare in this house, so I wanted to give them a little bit of a makeover. So I was doing that as part of my nesting. We did a lot of home decor DIY projects. I made a um, upholstered headboard, which was really fun, and some other things. I did a pleated lampshade. Not anything that I'm really gonna share with you guys because <laughs> I did it at a varying degree of, uh, the quality is very DIY, but it makes me happy and that's that's all that matters. Um, so that's really what's been going on with us over here. You know, just dealing with baby stuff and working on projects as they come. I have had one big knitting project though. Uh, and that is something that I mentioned in my UFO video because I had this yarn from um, Knit and Wear, but I did decide to pick that yarn back up when we were going to the movies before Noah was born, uh, you know, to kill some time and enjoy a couple of extra date nights. My husband and I decided to go to the movies to see Mad Max, um, Fury Road, is that what it's called? I'm not sure. Uh, I think so. And we went to go see that and I didn't have a sock cast on that I could work on. So I decided to get started on a garter stitch cardigan, which is something that I had said that I wanted to do. So I was very proud of myself for following through with that. <laughs> and so I got started and that was a great project to have in the movie theater. It was just back and forth knitting because it's garter stitch. And I've been working in panels for the cardigan. The one time that panel panels seem to be working out for me, which is wonderful. Uh, and I'm very close to being done with that cardigan project and I'm really excited to show it to you when it is done. I'm working on the last sleeve and then I'm gonna pick up for some uh, ribbing at the bottom and on the, the cuffs. Uh, and I'll tell you more details about that when I get there. But yeah, so I have had some other, like have had a knitting project on the needles. However, not very uh, dedicated to it. <laughs> Dedicated to sleep, I'll tell you that right now. Um, although I have been able to get some good sleep. Not touch wood, you know, that uh, it continues and then I'm not jinxing myself, but uh, it, it hasn't been terrible. But I will credit that to having extra help, you know, like I was saying before, having people uh, able to watch Arthur, uh, someone, some extra hands to hold the baby every once in a while. That's been really, really great. Um, and so, yeah, uh, I have been able to just feel more rested and just feel like a person. <laughs> uh, not anything like I feel today though, because this is the first time that I actually straightened my hair and put on mascara in over a month, a month plus. <laughs> Uh, so that's been, um, so this is a treat today. Um, you're getting me at my most glammed up that I've been in ages. <laughs> but yeah, when Noah was first born, it was so shocking how much they looked alike. They were the same baby when they came out. Um, we were looking at photos. I have a photo, a, a little picture frame with two photos side by side, and I have a picture of Arthur when he was five days old and a picture of Noah when he was five days old. It is the same baby it is the sh most shocking thing. Uh, and we were just, when he was born, Noah was born, we were looking at him in the hospital, just like, oh my gosh, he looks exactly like Arthur. They are going to be twins. This is the weirdest thing. <laughs> Did not expect it. Um, but a month later I took the one month photos, um, that I was doing with Arthur and yeah, they look completely different. Noah has really come into his own. He is certainly a much chunkier baby. He came out almost 10 pounds, uh, a full two pounds heavier <laughs> than Arthur. And a month later, he's two kilos, so four pounds heavier than what Arthur was at a month. Uh, this baby 
doesn't eat for very long, but he loves to eat frequently and he is really packing on the pounds. <laughs> uh, big baby. He's definitely um, giving me a workout very early on. Um, and uh, yeah, so they're very different. I can say that he has grown into his own little person. He definitely has a very sweet laid back personality. Um, he is already smiling and already cooing a lot, like trying to communicate, um, still, you know, <laughs> at one month, I remember Arthur also cooing back to me. If I cooed at him, he would coo back. Noah, I feel like is doing that at the same, if not earlier at like three weeks, I swear to goodness gracious, we had a smile, uh, which is so much earlier than what Arthur did. He did it at like two months. So I was not expecting that. So I'm thinking his personality is really showing. I think he's a lot, a very social baby, wants to be around us all the time and get a lot of FaceTime in. He loves talking. And um, yeah, it's nice to see that kind of thing. Uh, having a summer baby has kind of thrown me through a loop though, going back to you know, knowing what to expect as a second time mom, feeling like I've got everything. That is true, but since I've had a baby in the fall, colder weather, um, that experience is, I'm like scratching my head with what does the baby wear to sleep? We don't have air conditioning. So I have to really keep an eye on the temperature in our room and see like, okay, how do I dress baby tonight? It's never the same. Uh, so that's one thing that's really been challenging for me is to figure all that out. And yeah, like just kind of goes with why I haven't really had the knitting mojo to knit anything for Noah. I know one day he'll probably look at me and be like, you knit Arthur all these sweaters and you didn't knit me anything when I was a baby. Although maybe he won't really care. <laughs> he probably won't care. And I'm just um, reflecting or um, I'm just projecting. Uh, but yeah, like having a summer baby, it's like, what's the point? You know, <laughs> he wouldn't even fit in all the things that I made for Arthur anyway just how um chunky he is like he went way past he's in three months and he's almost outgrowing three months clothing so i mean he might fit into some like one year sweaters that i made for arthur uh by october <laughs> i don't know uh just guessing here is the one square that I have done since we have been chatting. <laughs> I'm very chatty today and not really focused on what I'm doing. So I'm not going to be flying through these. Not that I'm really somebody who can fly through crochet anyway, but I'm thinking adding a couple of these here and there will be really nice to kind of add on to the blanket. Uh, I really like this green color with the navy. I think it looks really good. All right, next color. Hmm. I do have this, pull this back maybe. But he will get this baby blanket, I'm telling you. Uh, eventually it will be finished. There's no, there's nothing in the rules that say it needs to be finished before he comes out of the womb, is before he is born. So I am going to be working on this as I can, and he's just going to have to understand that I was prioritizing him and his health and his needs over making the baby blanket, and I'm sure he will understand. And even if it were finished now, I don't even know if we would be using it as a blanket, more of a decoration piece on his bassinet maybe, but um, not really getting actual use out of it to keep him warm because let's be honest, he just doesn't need a woolly blanket. Even if it is a little holy, he doesn't need a baby blanket that's made of 100% wool. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're working on it. We're getting it done as we can. And that's, <sighs> but yeah, I hope everything is well with you. Thank you for catching up with me. Uh, I hope, you enjoyed my story time <laughs> about the birth of my second son, Noah, Arthur and Noah, my two boys, my two sweet, sweet boys. I'm just so thankful to be the mom and I'm really enjoying every minute of it, even when it is overwhelming and even when it is 
trying on my patience. Um, I hope I rise to <laughs> whatever the moment is and do it well. I, I'm trying my best and I'm tired. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, I hope it doesn't. I hope it's not like, oh yeah, you look very tired. I hope we all know that I'm tired, but I don't look terrible. <laughs> that's, that's what you can hope for. Um, because I don't feel terrible. I just feel a little slow. <laughs> And, but that's to be expected, so I'm not, I'm not feeling down about that. Anyway, now I'm just rambling. I really enjoyed chatting, sharing my story. I hope you enjoyed hearing it. I hope you got some rose in on whatever it is you're working on. Definitely let me know what that is in the comments. Uh, have you been doing any crochet? Do you have any like crochet granny square projects that you love because I might be picking those up a little bit later. Once I finish this one up, I might just keep the crochet train going. So just let me know. And I hope to be able to catch up with you guys again very, very soon. Can't really promise anything. Uh, I think over the next couple of months, it'll be just a, pro uh, a video here and there. Um, nothing to Nothing too intense with my posting schedule. It's just gonna be pretty relaxed and I hope um, you guys are cool with that. So thanks for sticking around. Really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.